Hello and welcome to Body Bags. My name is James and I'm a Sunday Night Reviewer. And for today's review, I'll be um, doing another in car review while I was travelling to work. But the film I'll be covering <coughs> it will be the. Um, I think it's actually made in 2017. Maybe did its festival release. We got its wide release last year. Um, and that is the Argentinian film Terrified. So this is like a it's a ghost film, basically. But the plot of it, um, we follow this couple at the start, and the the wife or girlfriend, um, she's hearing things from the sink, from the drain. So when her husband comes home she tells him about this and says that the um, the voices are saying that they want to kill her um, he's been fairly standing about everything kind of um, that he's like well maybe it's the neighbour because he's doing work at home uh, renovation work maybe it's old pipes stuff like that but anyway, we um, kind of switch and it's night time and the wife or girlfriend again, she, um, she wakes up in the night and she goes to the bathroom and you start hearing some banging on the wall and it's um, the guy who wakes him up and it's like, five o'clock in the morning or something. It's like, what the hell is this? It just starts banging on the wall. It's like, ah, oh, okay, I'm going to neighbour be doing work at this time again. The banking continues. Um, so he goes outside to go and confront the guy. So he goes around the front. He's buzzing on the guy's intercom. And someone answers, but no one says anything. But there's these weird noises which almost kind of vaguely represent talking kind of it's kind of this static eerie sound and the guy buzzing like crazy just gives up shouting goes home and so he's walking back in walks past the bathroom walks into the bedroom and the banging's still there and he's that's not the neighbour banging is that from the bathroom from his wife or girlfriend and he goes in there and it's a pretty awesome scene that you see I'm not going to try and give too much away on this one um, yeah it's pretty wow what you see pretty well done pretty cool looking and um, basically when you see him next I uh, I think Oh, what is it? I think he's in a psychiatric hospital. And he's been, I think he's been arrested and he's been put into this hospital. Sorry, I'm having to change hands. Um, because his wife's disappeared. And there's a panel of people. And they're actually kind of a couple of psychic investigators. And one is an ex mortician uh, so yeah an ex war worker um, used to carry out um, autopsies and he we kind of have a backflash to where he um, he's been called to a, a case um, basically in the same street there's um, a child who's playing outside and then he, he goes in the garden of the neighbour for a, the neighbour that's been doing the um, the work on his house the renovation work stay with me I jump around a bit here but yeah so he's the neighbour who our original couple who we were following the one that they thought was banging on the wall basically the kid's there and he's um, told to go away, basically, really eerily creepy. He's 
so he backs out at the house and doesn't realise he's in the road. Okay, a bit of a spoiler, he gets hit by a bus. And um, yeah, this will slip into spoilers, it's going to have to a bit. So he tragically dies. And so we have the funeral and everything. And then this is where the, sorry, the, uh, the mortician gets a call. It's a few days later, four days later I think. And there's a police officer who he knows and he's like, calls him in the night. He's like, I need you to come to this house because there's something scary going on. So he gets to the house and the child, child's corpse is sat at the table with some milk in a pose. So they're discussing about this. It's like, well, how did this happen? Kind of thing. And they're like, well, many, many different things. It could be that the mother's grief kind of drove her to um, to bring her son back home. But the mortician, he doesn't believe this because he's had a, several cases of dead people waking up not obviously becoming alive again but they're still dead but they've woken up so he believes it's this uh, so they switch the light off to go out and then the milk knocks over and then they put the light back on and it's not moved and they're like looking really closely and anyway they like decide to leave the lights on and go in into a different room and they're discussing this and then on kind of a few hours later in the next day one of the boy's friends is in the garden collecting some toys of his and he sees the corpse and he's kind of looking at it through the window and his head slowly starts to turn it's just very freaky very cool um okay so all that happens and then we kind of go back to what's going on so the original guy who we're following is now in the um, in the hospital um, so he signs a form to say that they can use his house because there's some uh, these events going on it's kind of located in this area because we also see and follow the neighbor and the reason why we see one of the, the doctors why they kind of know about this is before you see all this situation with the boy, we follow the neighbor who can't sleep because he's like, there's something wrong with ghosts or possession or something like in his house. And he's trying to get the contact from one of these um, psychic investigators. Everyone's told him to contact this one doctor. Oh, she won't take his case. She's too busy or something. So he needs to get evidence for her. So yeah, he's lying in bed, and like the bed's moving and stuff like that. So he sets these cameras up. He wakes up again in the night. There's all that he sees these figures running off and stuff like that. And he's looking under the bed, and there's nothing there. And then there might be something there. And it's it's kind of quite cool. And then he sees stuff on the camera. He's looking at the camera, and then stuff happens. And he basically disappears as well. So why the doctor's there in the first place is she's investigating what's happening. Um, she's taking photos so what happened to the boy the boy who ran over he actually lives across the street from these other two so it really is something going on in this area so like I said we, we kind of jump forward and then this is where we kind of get to the main kind of the meat and bones of the film about what's going on uh, these investigators trying to find out about these ghosts they're trying to find out what's going on in this situation so there's one set up in each house and it gets pretty freaky the, the policeman's there he's pretty cool he, he's linked to this because he's a policeman he's on the scene of the crime he's also used to be in a relationship with the mother of the child that dies and it's all tied together really nicely but I just kind of I don't want to go into the kind of the whole main part of the film I just kind of just went into what was at the start of the film so um yeah so, like, so, so this is a, like a ghost film sorry it's a stupid car in front of me but 
they don't fill it with jump scares. It's kind of, it's it's slow burn, but I mean, I love slow burns, but even if you don't like slow burns, I think there's, there's enough going on here. Uh, the dialogue's really interesting. Um, unless you hate subtitles, because obviously it's in Spanish. Uh, you won't probably like it as much. It's really interesting, and there's kind of how it's all building up, and then you start to see more things and more going on. And I like how it kind of jumps around in the background to how we get some um, background on, on our on our characters, because the film shifts to the main part being kind of the mortician and the policeman, and they're the main focus of the film. Um, yeah. Like I said, it's really freaky, really, really eerie, and everything's kind of, fa yeah, fairly slow paced. And when you see spooky stuff going on, that's slow paced. There's, um, I think I counted like three jump scares in the film, but I genuinely think that they are not jump scares. They're they're not put in there to just make you jump. They're just bits where they quicken up the pace. Maybe the ver okay. Slight spoiler on the very last scene, it's a bit of a jump scare, and it's a bit eh. I didn't like the very, very last scene, because it didn't kind of fit the rest of it. It, it wasn't needed. And like the other two bits, it's just a quicker pace, and it's it's kind of cool what happens. And it's, it's a really eerie kind of feeling film, and it's creepy, and the suspense is there. It's a cool setting. Um, whether you're from Argentina or if you visited there, uh, yeah, like the kind of house and the street, it's kind of uh, the, the layouts of the houses and everything, they're kind of intercoms and stuff. I just like the layout and the setup and the characters. This is a really nice film, it's really well done. It's, um, it, like, it looks really nice as well. It's like the, um, the ghostness kind of <laughs> ghost scenes. Are, uh, nicely done as well. And like I said, it has this genuinely creepy atmosphere and it, this fear of dread that's building up. And they, they, they do it really well. It's like obviously the, the sounds and the music is quite creepy. And it's really refreshing that they didn't throw the jump scares on the top because it really doesn't need it. This film is kind of freaky enough on its own. So, yeah, there we go. That's my review of Terrified. Uh, this is currently on, um, at least it's on Nordic Netflix, the Finnish Netflix, however, they split themselves up. I think it's actually different countries, so uh, I think actually Netflix might have picked this film up. So this might be actually a, a Netflix release. So they, they were the one that gave it distribution. Anyway, if you have Netflix um, or any other way to, to watch this film, I really recommend it. So thank you very much and um, I'll speak to you all next week. Okay, bye bye.